I want to I want to get into your net idea your ne yakho no gore it was in shambles. Mm. How then did you fix the relationship with uh, potential sponsors? Because it was in shambles. Libo no boni ko lobo na walk out of meeting ya. It's because no one really believed that there was ever going to amount to anything else. Even when Palisa did win, there yeah. was not a lot of people that were supportive of it. So what kept you going? I think it changed from being just a beauty pageantry for me, like I said, to saying Botswana needs to participate. It became a civic duty for me as a Botswana to say we need to participate in the, in the beauty industry. And when you talk about the beauty industry, you talk about film, you talk about... Uh, you talk about perfume, makeup, everything. Because I started to believe her. What we need to, need to do is to move it away from just being a, a beauty pageantry. So that's why you see this year we did 37 episodes of television. And we sold those to, to, to be TV. Okay. That's what this is supposed to be. I mean, uh, the amount of love that exists for pageantry, that's what we wanted to turn it into. So, so for me, I don't think we ever recovered uh, we recovered from uh, sponsors yeah. because to this day we are still struggling to get the big only now we're seeing the likes of Lucara who've come on board big time and yeah. sends us with a you know we, we get to Miss World and we disrupt everything because we, no. yeah but they missed it on one picture yeah. yeah there was one picture where they were standing by the side of the, the, the I think they were standing by the side of the river where the boat is Ripozar Alessona Satsoka no, 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 no. The Sego was very sick, actually, when the whole time she then? was... Then? No, 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 no. That's, that's very true. I mean, okay. uh, remember, even when she came back, we postponed all her interviews. Huh? Okay. Yeah, we postponed all... Last week, the Sego... Oh, even on national TV, on, on TV, she was coughing. The Sego was very sick. I had to send my friends. I, I don't think... You, you know, we treat our queen like queens. You yes, know? sir. No, we... Like, like, they... When we become Miss Botswana, you have... You have You've people. Made it, baby. You made it. You have people <laughs> around you. We we don't joke, man. We yeah. don't joke. Even right now, we 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 picking up everything. We picking up the standard, and yeah. that's the, the the treatment. You know, that treatment that Lesejo wanted. You know, she has people around her. You know, yeah. you have the, your daily chaperone, that person who's just there to take care of you. I saw her walk into the building on BTV, flowing mm. like this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Looking like a whole superhero. Yeah. So we haven't she, messed our chances is, up. Uh, it's you, you know what, I I sometimes I because I don't run Miss World, mm. so I don't know how they decide. You know, but it's a commercial business. You, uh, this we should remember. Uh, these guys are not going to judge according to our standards. They're going to judge how it makes commercial sense to them. Different identities. Food podcast with BSCD. What up, what up, what up? What's going on, everybody? What's happening? It's another edition of the Pudicast right here at Leo's Inn in Haburoni, right around the Middle Star area. I'm telling you, you need to come out here. The accommodation is absolutely affordable, and you can also come in. You can, you know, you can make your own food. You can bring your own groceries. It's that type of place, and it's in the heart of Gap City. So even if you have people coming in from outside of the country, um, you can always bring them over here so that they can hang out and uh, be in the heart of Haburoni. All right. Uh, today, another edition of the Pudicast. Like we said, we have another guest. Uh, who's got all kinds of crazy credentials because his but a special shout out to local corner of course remember to subscribe to the page uh, local corner multimedia page and uh, make sure that you check out all of uh, the footage that they got going on also pay close attention to what's going to be going on here because that's also something that local corner might be very very close to all right so make sure subscribe to the page as well the founder and executive director uh, of Miss World Botswana and Miss World, actually Miss Botswana, uh, from January of 2015 to um, present, which is about nine years now. And uh, he's also um, been director uh, of Development Advanced Institute uh, in Gaboroni from about 2014. He's also been, uh, well, he's 
I guess he still is the executive chairman of Ben Ralitati Group of Companies. And uh, he's also uh, been chief executive officer of the Botswana National Youth Council. And I think that's how most of us got to know him in uh, the public space. Ladies and gentlemen, in the house today, we are joined by none other than uh, beauty industry captain managing the product that is Miss Botswana. Yeah, Mr. Benjamin King Ben uh, Ralitati. What's up, big homie? <laughs> um, I'm 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 good. I'm no. good. We are compl- a lot of people in your one of your introductions, but we will correct it. Yeah. But Whoever was doing the research for you. No. Yeah. She's right <laughs> over there. You know. She's amazing at it. She really, really went thorough with you because um, uh, you you just came off doing um, another historic Miss Botswana. Um, you've been doing them for the past. How many years have you been doing these these competitions? We. We've been, I've been at it now for, from 2018, which makes it seven years almost. Yeah. yeah, six years. But if you count COVID, COVID, you know, was the, the, the tricky year in between. Yeah. So I've been at it for, for, for that long. I, and, and I think, I don't know whether you want me to jump into it or no, you still no, want no, to. No, 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 no. There's still a lot of time. We, got, <laughs> we, 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 we took you fresh from it because like, it was important for us to actually even address it. And we're happy. Yeah. that you actually uh, agreed to come through to speak to us mm. after such an eventful you know, you know night you guys crowned another beautiful young uh, Motswana who's going to ultimately represent us out there in the world but before we even get into that the name Benjamin Ralitati has not always been synonymous with beauty you <laughs> you are a businessman you know how how do these things come together i mean you you grew up wanting to be what exactly <laughs> okay interesting enough um Benjamin Ralitati. That's my yeah, name. Yeah. Um, my name, my middle name, Kimalebo. Yeah. So I have a I have a Sotswana name called Malebo. It's an unusual name. Uh, <laughs> for, my mom's name. <laughs> for, 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 for a guy, yeah. uh, I was asking my great grandmother who gave me that name, and she says, "Hey, there was this handsome dude when he was born," and she thought. I name Malibu. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe I could have been called Beauty. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Um, I was born in Maung. Um, I was born in Maung. My mother is from Maung, actually. Uh, it, it, I think it always surprises people uh, sometimes, uh, especially for people who are watching in Botswana, when I change tone. You know, people are always like, but where did that come from? I, I was born in Maung in 1973. Mm-hmm. I did my, even did my standard one go Maung. Mm-hmm. So in, 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 in fact, that's like my side of my mother. My father is from Serue, mm-hmm. uh, but then immigrate, somehow moved to Mahalape and became one of the Ngakakai clan. So I have I have two, two sets of uh, relatives, one in Surue mm. uh, and one in Mahalape, the Ngakakai, uh, Ngakakai clan. Yeah. Um, so started my primary school in, in, in Maung. Mm. Ironically, went st- to do standard two in Hansi primary school. And then... <laughs> what is all of this movement? Like, there's so many people by <laughs> who grew up all over the country. Was it because of your parents? No, no my generation. My generation that is f- 50 and above now, yeah. maybe 45. Yeah. Um, what you call my 74 <laughs> we we were we were all over the place you know when you had a working parent hey. they were all over the place mm. so moved from there and n- now settled in my in my real place i think we got to francis town when and i, w- I started doing my standard two in francis town yeah because i didn't finish my standard two, no it's standard three in francis town yeah went to satellite primary went to stalakosi junior and completed my secondary school go go, go fss so i'm i'm a francis town I, so uh, you're one of those uh, niggas who came through to Gabs <laughs> and took over. Because I don't want to leave you on the now all of these ghetto guys who came through during the 90s, it was 2000, who came over and just took over Gabs. Are you that cohort? I'm, I didn't, I'm not sure we took over Gabs. I'm serious. We, we, right we, now it's the women. <laughs> right now it's the ghetto girls who are taking over everything up in Gabs. So... What, like I'm talking about aspiration as far as you're concerned. This growing up in ghetto, um, going through what you went through as a student throughout ghetto, what created aspiration inside you? What did you want to be at this point and what did you think was achievable? I think I started off, because I was coming from the likes of Hansi, I was one of the best traditional dancers in my initial Please. in my initial days in the ghetto. Please, in the comments, Which, we need someone to verify this. Yeah. Guys, come here. <laughs> And start telling us, you, what? 
You know, um, <laughs> and, and this, let, let, me, let me throw in names so that the people that you can verify. Let, 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 let me name drop. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody that when I go to the ghetto, we are, we are close neighbors and grew up to be my, my brother. Yeah. Uh, was like the likes of Josh Proctor, Mike Proctor, Lishima. Hey, oh, Lishima. Hey. BK BK Proctor. Still rocking my BK. You're still rocking your BK. Now I'm going to say my Shima. Yeah, your Shima. Kishima, Shima Proctor. You know, they they were part of my family. And Kiribonyi Proctor, who's Shima's aunt, was my dance partner for a while. And then also Mavis Proctor was my dance. I think we used to come to Gabs to compete, and I used to represent the northern side because my mother was a member of was one of the leaders there for B. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it was only natural that you became, you became a dancer. I was a very good dancer. Yeah. Until, until when you're growing up in Francis, until you discover New Yorker, the cave and the rest of them. Then I moved into hip hop and break dance. Yeah. Bans, Manu, Bans, you remember DJ Bans now? DJ Bans, yeah. His original name was Manu, is Manu, Manu, Manu. Yeah. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> <laughs> Oh Man, your money because he like oh no there was this there was this fat cakes they were very small hey. they were sold like and buns used to like those so when as he improved his name <laughs> oh and then no that's how the name buns came about okay you I'm, mean buns the one who was yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you yeah remember we were with DJ buns at um Mapeta's memorial he's still one of the most hilarious guys I can see buns being a fat guy. <laughs> Yeah, no, yes. <laughs> so I'm already being controversial, uh, spilling, spilling beans on guys. <laughs> no, Banz is one of my big homies. No, I no, salute Banz, that guy. Banz, that, that, that was my boy growing yeah. up. Um, we, he, Area W boy. Yeah. We grew up in, in, in... But I think the inspiration in Ghetto is that uh, we, we are such musical. Yeah. Um, we, 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 we used to listen to a post-traditional dance, we used to listen to hip-hop, a lot of hip-hop, NWA, you know, uh, Wooten Clan, yeah. name it, that, that became our culture. And the, the aspiration was really um, uh, education, you know, yeah. like education, education, education. I mean, mm. even I think when we were coming to Gabs, of course I used to come to Gabs, but my, my grandmother used to live in, in the, we had Massimo yeah. next to Habane there. So we used to come there during the holidays. And, yeah. and, and I remember, I would just come, go to, um, which is New Naledi now, I think. Uh -huh. the, the people then, eventually people moved to G West. Uh -huh. So I used to come there, stay there for a few days, but go to Masimu, then go back to Ghetto. Okay. Coupled with that, <laughs> I, I, I was like, I used to, over the holidays, my, my grandfather was like, uh, my grandfather's, um, my grandfather, let me say, sister to my mother, my grandmother, uh -huh. was also a Mocharala Kosiko Shakawe. Okay. So we used to have my, uh, his Muraga was, Next to Shakawe, 90 kilometers from Shakawe. No, so, Karakas I don't appreciate how far Shakawe is. How far? It's, it's 1,200 kilometers almost from here. That's and why I'm always like, Masharab Rebagalatia Aron. Always when you see him in Gabs, like, that man had to travel. Yeah. You know, so that's a far place. So you zigzagged all no, across I've, the country. I've, I've zigzagged this country. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, a, a lot of family ar around, you know, Francis Town. You know, I, I, I often say I'm an adopted. You know, I, I'm not necessarily Kalanga, but I'm an adopted Kalanga. Mm. You know, I have a lot of um, uh, uh, family in the, in the, in the Kanga. Thing. You want to see one is, a, is an adopted Kalanga, see him as the spokesman of Tafik. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I used to be the spokesman for Tafik. So, yeah. so Aspirationally, I was always a very creative guy. Mm. Very creative guy. You know, when I finished my Form 5, went to Trilos Chaba in Kanye. Um, when I got there, I worked as in the court magistrate as, a, as an interpreter. And for some strange reason, that, um, that got me interest in social work because I used to see people come in and out of the court that needed assistance. Mm. I don't know how a, a guy who's like, creative creative yeah. mind whatever yeah. I, I ended up going to UB and I became I, I studied uh, a bachelor's degree in social work yeah. which is like so how did you become the interpreter for for the course was it something <laughs> that was assigned I, when you went into your trilogy how, how can I not, the social it, it finished right before okay, it's a from five yes you're in Trilos Chaba. Trilos Chaba. Hey, so yeah, I'm like always it. like I'm um, envious of people who did Trilos Chaba. Hori, when you left home, where now when you left home and ultimately became an interpreter for for your another royal house, no, 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 you what was we were placed. I was an interpreter for the court for hey, for the magistrate court. Oh, um, so yeah. you were just placed in court. I, I was very lucky, and I, I, I like I said, I was. I think a few days I was supposed to go to Mohojo Hoje. 
uh, there's a village outside Kanye and then they changed their mind and I was brought to Kanye. And then mm. I, was, I was living with like a, a cop officer, a, a, a detective while I was the Trello Shaba and eventually like I was working at, at, at the court as an, an, an interpreter. Mm -hmm. Initially I was just sent to the court but because I could, I could interpret for people who, who couldn't speak. Right. So I eventually... Yes. Yeah, so then I applied, mm -hmm. I applied to UB. I think I had law... I had law, but I had it eight in English or something like that. So, <laughs> so, so that was my interest, mm -hmm. and then I ended up with with social work, um, yeah. and and I think it was an amazing thing. But the interesting thing is that while I was studying social work, because because of my entrepreneurial mind, I was always at loggerheads with my lecturers. Mm -hmm. I remember I wrote a paper once where I said, uh, I don't know whether I should say this, but no, go ahead. <laughs> it's in the past. <laughs> No one cares anymore. No one is going to pull this up and use this against you in the future. Go ahead. Yeah, I had, I had an interesting professor. Um, and um, You liked her? No, he was, he was, he was, a, he was an Israeli guy. Oh, okay. Um, Can't he, like a guy. He, <laughs> he, he liked the girl. He liked the girl. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> he... He sort of had a theory that in Botswana, if you're a street kid, it's because out of choice. Not out of, and I wrote a paper. He was to, right. I wrote a paper <laughs> that I already uh, that I was saying that, and and um, it was quite at the time a controversial paper because we say, look, Botswana society is such that it's so supportive. You know, every, each one of us has a place to sleep, and that's something that we our parents had created very well. So yeah, yeah. so ended up in what, UB. What was your take on, on 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 your paper? Like, what side of the story were you? I agreed with him. You agreed with him? Yeah, I agreed yeah, with yeah. him and said our society is such that <laughs> you remember, I don't know if you remember because when I was doing Bustana 1, Bustana 2, there used to be street kids mm. for some reason or the other and then for some reason they disappeared. So for some, so I, I believe maybe you guys were onto something at the time. What were people mad about? What were they saying you guys were, 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 were think, wrong? I think as social workers, we are supposed to be the ones that are caring, the ones that are, that are compassionate. And, and I think to write a controversial, uh, that was controversial. And I, I, the second thing that I did is while I was a, still a student at UB, I, I wanted, I sort of like trying to pioneer commercial social work. Because I was saying at the time, and I was still a, 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 a young boy. Um, undergrad, can you Undergrad, and saying, <laughs> look, <laughs> look, <laughs> about like i'm thinking this is like a dissertation yes you know i was <laughs> saying i was saying were you ruffling feathers on purpose what were you doing you know i think we'll, we'll talk about it as we go forward that hey. i seem to ruffle feathers sometimes without intense without wanting to do it because yeah. we're just wanting to do what i want to do mm. um i you know i said let's commercial social work yeah because i said social work is is, is boxing people to say you you want to say to anybody who's out there to say no it's okay to be poor it's okay to be and i said nah 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 that's not the way to do it why don't we commercialize because we are just you know when you deal with this product called a human being we're just part of the cycle of capitalism given yeah. that we operate in a commercial society yeah. why not c commercialize even uh, whether you want to call it poverty you want to call it. so it was it's a paper that didn't get me far. But, yeah, because you were a kid. What are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, first of all, you know the, the economy that we live in. It's yeah. capital and market social yeah, yeah. at the mm. same time. Yeah. So for a lot of us, we look at social work and we think about it as therapy also at the same time. As so mommy, how are we going to separate social work from therapy? Yeah. I, I was saying, I think... Uh, social work is also teaching people to just accept that situation and not get out of it. So, That's hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> so they were never gonna agree. So, so that, yeah. was, that was that was me uh, 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 back then. So, yeah, they know I'm, I'm hearing. So, I, at this point, this is um, how old are you when you're ruffling all of these feathers? And are you still trying to ultimately? What are you trying to be? Are you trying to be a social worker? Because at this point, Ronaldo, that's what you're studying for. Yeah. Or were you looking at any other things? Being also, Ria, I guess you're out of your comfort zone. You're not in the ghetto anymore. You're in Gaborone. Yes. Yeah. No, I was not in the ghetto anymore. But, you know, we had a posse when I was... Uh, is it a... You know, no, no, you can use that yeah. one. <laughs> P-O-S-S-E. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're from the ghetto. Um, one of the things that, at least at the minimum, that we used to enjoy was that um, we were a group. We were... That time, you know, boys were boys. You know, when, when they were 
difference is you went out to the street and you sorted it out. You yeah. know, uh, one man came out with a bloody nose, but nobody really got for the know, most part. Yeah, for the yeah. most part. You yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> so being from the ghetto, there was a there was a a group of us. You know, uh, I'm saying this because you know uh, whether feeling out of place. I think we came into UB. We were glad to be there, but we were also uh, this group that you didn't try to challenge us. Mm. Uh, there was a guy called Brian King. I remember one day he took on like um, five uh, or six uh, Gaps guys. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it was... <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. The Gaps guys were saying this guy, was, this guy was throwing rocks at them, but it was one man against six boys. So, so yeah. but... That was, you know, that was the interesting thing, uh, uh, getting out of university. I also happened to stay with a guy, who, somebody who was uh, studying law. So most of my, my time at UB, people didn't know whether I was studying law or not. But I think it was also some good exposure. But I was also always looking out uh, for ways to um, get myself... <sighs> I'm trying to find the right words for it because you're a social worker. Mm. You see commercial value in what we are doing. You are, you're, all you're seeing is numbers and saying, you know, you could, tain, you could take that, you could sell that, you could mm. do whatever, but you're a social worker. Yeah. The it, word is in the title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yes. So it, it, it was quite, quite interesting. Mm. So I finished... Interesting or frustrating because I'm trying to get your mindset at this <laughs> point in time or for you to then make the decisions that you ultimately made mm. on what did you get into your name, social work because I'm guessing the money was not what your aspirations wanted. Well, but, yeah. And I, like a lot of people end up in programs that then don't help them. I mean, I dropped out of economics because <laughs> I couldn't see myself becoming a finance guy. Anyway, yeah. and who also know how to get through the market. Yeah. So for you, you see yourself, this is, this is an oncoming train. Yeah. yeah, how do you duck it? You know, are you going to do social work? How, how then do you yeah, I think the way to duck it is that I started being talking commercial social work. Yeah, yeah. I, I started saying, let's monetize this social work. I started saying, when I get out of here, I'm going to put up a practice and I'm going to monetize it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did, um, you know, when we finished Go UB, uh, 97, eh? Sounds, uh, <laughs> I finished Go UB. Someone was five. I finished Go UB in 97. Yeah. Um, I think then we, we, we were. Yeah. We, uh, you know, most most of us were, you you get out of UB and you would you find a you will find a job ready for you, and the I land think of milk the, and the, the, the land of milk and butter. <laughs> so I got I got out of UB. I can see your camera say, men say oh, nah, one. That's no, that's interesting. These guys, ninety seven. Guys were young. Oh, guys were young. So, so at that point, guys could get out of just school. Hello, we tell us. And then you find a job. So, oh, so I I I was one of those because I didn't want to go and doing social work. It meant you went to communities. You know, like you were going to be a community social worker. You were going to be whatever. Yeah. So I got out and I worked. There was a office here Bofa, Botswana mm -hmm. Family Health Association across the street. So I went uh, across the street to go UB. So I went mm -hmm. there and asked them, I want to volunteer my time. They said, what do you want to do? I said, anything. Um, I remember that at the time, uh, Aus Kali, who was the, the, the uh, CEO, uh, gave me a few odd things to do and I hung around. I think at one time, maybe I cleaned, I cleaned the garden, whatever. Mm -hmm. I was doing everything at, at Botswana Family Welfare Association because I, during, that is during the time before we left and had to go back to the ghetto. Mm -hmm. But before we know it, there was a, an opportunity for a project mm -hmm. uh, called Project, I think it was Project 2000. Mm -hmm. And what then happened is that I think I was very lucky. I was given a Hilux, you know, a, a Hilux, mm -hmm. and given a few monies and sent to Maung and asked to go and set up a clinic, an a reproductive health clinic. So that's, that's how my whole thing started. <laughs> Luckily you had a license. Luckily I had a license. Yeah. I had a, you know, for me, if, now I think both, if they had it, for me, that car was not supposed to drive it all the time, but <laughs> it was my company car. Yeah. I turned it into my company car. Yeah. Um, but I went to my room, because at that time, remember, HIV AIDS was ravaging. Mm. I was a social worker. I was a creative social worker. Yeah. Um, I was sent to my own to set up what would probably be the first reproductive health clinic in the country. You know yeah. where, and for me, somebody was asking me, how do you manage to manage 
Libomis Botswana, you know, dealing with so many beautiful women mm -hmm. at the same time. I think it can be it can be a daunting task. Yeah. So the one thing that I think set the foundation for me is that I work at a reproductive health clinic yeah. and there you you were constantly seeing young women who who were coming to either collect pills, to collect condoms, to collect whatever. I mean, um, yeah. so, and we set up this reproductive health clinic, Komaung, um, and in the end... You know we, what's crazy about the Bofa thing? Yeah. Is that I think I've seen a Bofa sign in Maung before. Yes. Because I was in I set, I set that up. Because like even Mofa's for you can still see signing in our Bofa. Yeah, sign, signing in our Bofa is disappearing, but I set up the, the Bofa thing. Yeah. Fast forward, in, this is 98 when I went to Maung, set it up, you know, of course, we ended up getting a piece of land. And mm. uh, fast forward, I got recruited after doing amazing work. I think we set up a building, we set up whatever, uh, and, and we were very, very successful. You know, we were we were partnering with young women against teens and whatever. Mm. But I was always saying, we set up our clinic outside the village, and I kept saying, why would why would we continue to have a young person services outside malls? Because yeah. you know when you you are competing with everything else. The attention for a young person is with everything else. I wanted to set up a clinic within uh, commercial areas. Mm -hmm. Of course, I didn't get it at BOFA. I was recruited by UNFPA and Bo Botswana National Youth Council, which is the first time I met Botswana Youth Council, to go to Kasani. Yeah. Because I had done it so well in, in Maung to go to Kasani to set up a reproductive... How long have you been in Maung? I stayed for Maung for about four years. Mm. Um, and, and this was like your first job. This was my first what, job. Well, how much were they giving you at this point? Like, were you able to sustain a living in Maung? I'm my trying man, to imagine Maung. I was, in uh, I was one of the luckiest. I was one of the luckiest. I think at one time, I, I can't remember the salary. I think I was earning 4000 or something like at some point, And I had a car. In and Maung. I, I was born. What was in Maung? <laughs> 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 what was in Maung, though? I'm what, what, was in Maung? Uh, what was in Maung? Maung was the center of. The, Maung has always been the capital of um, uh, fun and. and it was and still Bratopsonanza. Bratopsonanza, a better than Goma Duo, Goma Duo, Goma Duo Guest Lodge. You know, we had all the regular guys in Maung were yeah. there. Um, for me, I think what made it easy for both of us that because, because I was from Maung, it was easy for me to to go back. Oh, and can I forget. remember I was You're born actually in, I was, from I was, I'm, I'm Actually, no, no. no. I'm well, from, you uh, are don't, from everywhere. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> get, don't get me in trouble with my father. I'm from Mahalape. Okay, Mahalape. Yeah, I'm from Mahalape and we closed the case there. <laughs> so, yeah, so I spent time there. I built up this clinic and I think that's when my commercial interest really started because I remember in Maung I started a small bookshop yeah. which later closed uh, in parallel to what, what I was doing. Because when I moved to, to Kasana after four years um, of, of running the Bufa Clinic, mm. um, uh, that, that business closed. When I got to Kasana, the first thing I did is like I set up a security company. Also closed. You know, you, first of all, how do you set up a security company? Do you see buff guys and then you're like, I'm going to set up? Or do you set up first and say, I'm going to look for buff guys? I think at that time, <laughs> I think at that time, one guy had won a tender and we thought <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and we thought his life his life was good so yeah. we everybody else was setting up that yeah. so i set up that parallel to setting up the botswana national youth council clinic in kasani mm. so that's the you know eventually when years later when i became the ceo of of, of bnyc i had been part of the structure at the village level mm. and i had seen the structure being formed um so I was in Kasani from 2002, and I used to live in house number 2002 in Kasani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, this, this whole start time, like the, the businesses that you ultimately do have at this point, like Osama Odi Tualayano, Bookstore, Odi Tualayano, Bookstore, Bookstore, Odi Tualayano, opened the security company, was not able to pay the guys, the guys were nearly... You know, the guys were nearly choking me. Kind of that's what I'm always thinking. Well, when <laughs> guys go and start off like a security company or even like the bouncer, yeah. don't you think these guys are going to show up one day and hire or how I'm doing? Just out of yeah, curiosity. Yeah, I, 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 went, I, I went through that. I mean, I went through that. Guys once, uh, uh, you know, guys once closed me up in my house, you know, had to call for help because you, I could yeah. not afford to pay them. So, you know, the, by nature, is, I'm this guy who does it, takes it to that some level, gets bored and moves on. Definitely. Yes. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your the Botswana National Youth Council. Before you joined it and abandoned ship on, well, not pretty much abandoned ship, mm. but get into another line of thing. Mm. What was the Botswana National Youth Council to you when you first heard about it? 
I think for me, Botswana National Youth Council was this group of young people who are governing themselves. Yeah. yeah, through and setting up youth centers where they can come and, you know, lend the structures, how, how government is run. So, but it was very, very, um, there was a lot of interest in, like, because many of the young people that are coming out of the BNYC were going into politics. Yeah. Yeah. So there will be, uh, in area, when you pass through the, the structure of the BNYC, you will end up with being either a member of the council or, like, from, as we will talk about it later, yeah. a lot of the people that became that were former CEOs, um, went into parliament. You know, I took over from Fidelis Mulau, mm. who took over from Makale Mele, who took over from Pomura Komu, who <laughs> took over from... So you can see just the line of... Uh, 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 the line of people that when they, when they eventually left, they became members of parliament. When you, when, even when, we was, when I was there at, at, the, at the BNYC, you, I could say, um, at one time we had 80 young people that were members of the structures of the BNYC, and they were members of the, they were members of councils, mm. you know, as, as councillors coming right out of the structures of the BNYC. I think that's that's what, you, that's what you saw. That's what I saw, and the influence and the the interest. I, I remember dealing a lot with Ramlazi in Kasani. Mm. He eventually became a member of parliament, and and we were there, you know, uh, rooting out, rooting for him, um, mm. and all of us rooting for different people. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Um, because like you say, a lot of us saw a lot of the people who were in the Botswana National Youth Council. So ultimately, get in some way or the other into government or mm. like mm. being positioned for it. Mm. Um, w was that your ambition? Is that what you thought was ultimately going to happen for you <laughs> when you ultimately got on as the executive director? Because like that's a lot of work. How long had you been before you ultimately became executive so, director? So I was I was I joined BNYC in 2002, but I was not. <clears throat> I was um, I was like consultant for lack of a better way. I was hired by the UN United Nations. A population fund to be and our second to be NYC uh, so I was my pay I was not part of the payroll okay so I was paid directly from the UN uh, this is 2002 2003 2004 five and then eventually as I grew in the position I was then promoted to come to leave Kasani mm. to come and head the whole program for the UN in Habro, based in Habrun. okay of course it took BNYC six months remember I was having so much fun in Kasani. Yeah. Kasani, I think for me, was um, the ultimate. You know, you, you are, you, we will go to sleep. We will, at 10, decide we are going to Lusaka. And then yeah. we will jump in the car and we'll go to Lusaka. We will... The, the Namibia is right here. Namibia is right here. Yeah. You know, Vic Falls is How right How old are you at this point? Like, before when I, you were, um, were faced with that decision? I think I'm 25, 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, yeah, in those yeah, yeah, areas. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so all these areas, I think Kasani for me was the ultimate, ultimate boy's dream. I mean, Definitely. we, uh, you know, we were close to everything. We used to drive. Uh, I remember our motto was, uh, <laughs> everything else is close. Uh, yes, like yeah. Kasani is close. You know, yeah. we used to leave Khabaroni and I, I'm saying, you, you, need, you still think about it and get scared. Mm. We used to leave Gabs at 10 at night on Sunday night to go back to work in, in Kasani and we will arrive in Kasani at 8 in the morning and shower and go to work but and ultimately you took the job so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out so how did you then you know get lured into, into being here and how long were you in, in you know, the BNYC before you ultimately became I think yes. it's CEO I get yes ultimately yeah, I became the, C becoming the CEO yeah. so let me just quickly I, I, I left I left um I left Kasani eventually in 2006. Okay. Yeah. To come and head the, uh, a, a the whole reproductive circle, you know, setting up youth centers in BNYC. Okay. Um, eventually then, um, two years down the line, I think it was about 2009, I was recruited by Population Services International, PSI. Mm -hmm. All of us know it as yeah. the, the condom people. So <laughs> I, was, I was recruited there. Yeah. Because remember... Developing it. No, no, PSI, PSI Population Canada, Services yeah. International. They had the comic books. Yeah, they had the comic books. They had Miss, Miss Lovers. They had Miss, Miss Lovers, Lovers Plus, Plus at the yeah, time. They had Lovers the, Plus. The, the, the Lovers Plus condoms. So, yeah, maybe that's where my, my pageantry history, the one that <laughs> <laughs> comes from. Because Miss Lovers Plus was one of the biggest, actually. Yeah, it, it was. It produced one of some of the biggest uh, stars in the country. Shout so, out Betsy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 
went to PSI. Amazing enough, I'm coming from BNYC. They recruited me. There was a, an old man called Sumitri. He recruited me as the head of business mm -hmm. to sell Lavas Plus. Out of a guy who was just distributing condoms and whatever, I came to sell Lavas Plus. Because I think for some reason, after seeing some of the work that I was doing, he realized that commercial value. Mm -hmm. So that's now when I seriously tried to, started to make a 10. Um, I spent some time with PSI. We grew the, the brand. We got some of the highest, the biggest funding that is available in the country. Quickly, I was recruited by FHI, which is FHI 360 now, mm. as the country head. And they trailblazing some youth work um, and what um, does FHI do? Guys? Family Health International. Oh yeah, yeah. We, you know, it was almost part of the work that we were doing. There so, with we, reproductive health at this point in time, really, it's all about. It's all about reproductive health because yeah. it's, it's, it's around the era when HIV was yeah. predominantly the key yeah. issue. So it was just about ensuring that young people, you know, got PSI. We were talking about. Um, male circumcision, you know, I remember Noah, uh, uh, you know that campaign, Yaka Noah uh, is the goalkeeper. Noah Maposa. Noah Maposa. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also, there was that uh, Oh, Atiba. Uh, yeah. Atiba. Yeah, yeah, there was that, that song one. that we, we did, Yaka, I, I think it's VS. We check. We check. Yeah. We bought, we bought, when I was at PSI, yeah. we used that song and, and I think we played the guy handsomely, yeah? No, Brian is still good to this day. Yeah. <laughs> But it was we check and, 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 yeah. and I think that was the start of many of the you know PSI was the start of the many things that now started to open up my eyes um, yeah. to you know now the coming of me and then I think we we and then we did a controversial one um, we were advertising I think condoms uh, lovers plus condoms the yeah. use of condoms. And there was a song at that time trending, Yaka Zeus. Eh? Mafoti. Mafoti. Yeah, super when hot again, um, Yeah. So, so we, we said, we used the song Kele 14 to say Kele 14, I don't sleep, you know, yeah. we, we, you know, I use a condom all the time. Yeah. And so for some reason, that was mistreated as to saying the, 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 our funders at the time thought we were saying the 14 means a 14 year old oh, we say no it doesn't mean that that is how it was interpreted i can tell you this thing cost a whole halabaloo um I, I, if i didn't lose my job then yeah. <laughs> i nearly lost my job then but i think that's just a time now i was coming of age oh. you know i was realizing my what i want to do i went to fhi I think I regressed when I went to FHI in that I went back to programming, yeah, mm -hmm. reproductive health and, and, and youth development, proper, proper, yeah. um, without any commercial. So I spent about a year and a half go FHI from 2010. And then in 2011, early on, I got a call from Soliri Kelitzen, who was the acting chairman for BNYC, to say, do you want to come yeah. to BNYC? I said, yeah, king, king. <laughs> king, king. <laughs> because I'm saying, you know, there's no way you could not ignore like this was a step up. Yeah, it was a step up. So when you get in there, what what is the environment? Look, you, and how long were you in there for before all of the drama, the fireworks started? The fireworks. I think, you know, to be fair to BNYC, I think they took a risk because in my interview, this is what I said. I said this and I'm going to repeat it. And I said it to the interviewers, five people yeah, just mm. Tumi Ram Tumi Ramzan was the one of the people who interviewed oh, me. Oh yeah. Uh, it was um uh, yeah and then I think uh Hule um Masi, no, not Masi. Uh, oh Tebazo. Tebazo Hule yeah, was one yeah. of them, uh, some of the guys. And in the interview, this is what I said. Say, guys, I'm a change maker. If you want a change maker, recruit me. If you want a guy who just comes here to come and sit down, I'm the wrong guy. Mm. They took me on. Interesting on. I, and I think for me, that was, I think you have to give it kudos to them to say, mm -hmm. look, they wanted a guy who wanted to say, I'm going to shake things up and, 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 and whatever. So I got to the BNYC 2011. First thing I walked into the door, I said, um, I looked at my whole team and said, we're going to restructure the whole team. I said, this is my first view. My first view is that if you're going to change the way Botswana young people, uh, you want to put them to the next level. You need to bring the people who are at that level. Mm. So my first uh, thing I did is that I changed the whole salary structure. I went on and recruited about four people which I thought were change makers. I went into one person I got from Debswana uh, in Urapa, 
Kuki uh, Pirinyane. I went and recruited uh, Wanessa Musinya. I think now he's the head of Debswana. Yeah. He's, he's the head of DBS. Yeah. I went on and recruited uh, Pela Lokue. I think he's, he's now the, dep, the acting PS at the Ministry of Minerals. And then I had uh, Dr. Boga. He's now a professor at, at the University of P those are my those are my core those team. Those are your four people. The yeah. four people that I brought in and said, I'm going to recruit these people, pay them, and get because I said, if these people the difference that they will make, it will blow up and change the economy of this country. That was my first year action. Mm. And what I was not ready for, because I had never worked for government before. I had never had a, a situation where people that work for you, because one of the big contentions was that. I brought in these people and I paid them more than I, I paid myself. Yeah. And then the, the board, that, the new board, even at, at the PS level, was, the thinking was that I did that because I wanted to force the hand of the, the whole structure to increase my salary. I think I was not thinking that at the time. Because at, at FHI and PSI, my, my, my juniors were any more than I was. Because yeah. it, it was dependent on how professional, you had the power, you had the, the whole thing. Yeah. So, one year on after doing that, I got my first suspension from BNYC. I was on a five-year contract with BNYC. I got my first suspension for bringing this team on. Before you go ahead, yeah. I'm trying to figure this out, the relationship between the BNYC and the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture. The relationship between the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture and BNYC was such that we were a subsidiary of the... We were an, an because I think the BNYC existed before the, the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture. Yes, so but when, when the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture came through, the BNYC was passed to the to the to the uh, uh, Ministry of Youth. Remember, the BNYC was not a law; it was a presidential directive to to set up a group of people, group of young mm. people, so that they can self-govern. Mm -hmm. So it was not it was not a, a law as such. It was mm. set up as a semi-independent organization um, run by young people themselves. Awesome. To, you give them little money. We teach them how. The, the whole system is run. So, one year into my tenure, I get a suspension. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and I remember there was... You are too robust. Yeah, there was one journalist, um, I, I, he, he's, he called it youthful exuberance. Because, look, I, I brought in the best. You know, the, the young people that I'm talking about were well paid where they were coming from. Mm. So I just messed their... What were the expectations? What did you expect them to do exactly? So my, more, my, view was, was, yes, my view was that you bring in these young people, you change... And I was all commercial. Yeah. I said, you change how the young people... You, you raise the level of ambition of the young people, of the young people of this country. And then you change how they view themselves, how they create an opportunity for, for themselves to be moving forward as, as powerful people. Yeah. So that's what I thought. You know, do research, do fundraising. You know, when my board and the rest of uh, the team came to say, how are you going to raise this money? But I, I had proven myself. At FHI, we had raised, before I left PHI, uh, FHI, we had raised one of the biggest uh, uh, grants to ever be granted, you know, like $22 million mm. uh, being granted to FHI over a three year period. So I was confident, you know, at, at PSI, at one time for the WeCheckr project, I think we raised uh, close to between 30 and 40 million for, the, for that project. Uh, I was part of a team. Yo, that VS, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's never rapped another song sings. No, we didn't, we didn't give him that money. But no, we, but if you're <laughs> running around 30 million. Yeah. All right, so you were competent. So yeah, you, yeah, you, you, I believed you in You believed that you could make some level of change. I'm trying to figure out on order because um, at this level, because these, are, these newspaper reports were coming out every week. Yeah. At this point, because I, I, I want to move us along, because I'm sure yo, we want to get to Miss Busuana, we want to get to Miss Busuana. <laughs> because these things, I'm really trying to understand as well. Because, like, as a young and um, and, and focused and ambitious young Botswana, here you are walking into this building, mm. having expectations that you're going to make this change, and already you want to get a team again. Mm. You want to make something happen. How much of it was political? You know, you, you are being shown. Uh, was it just because youthful exuberance? Do you think it was politically um, uh, enforced? And are you politically affiliated, Ben? <laughs> I think, I don't know whether it was politically... Or were you at the time? Yeah, because I, I, I don't know if it was politically... I don't think it was politically motivated. I think yeah. it's just that you, you came in and you brought in this salary that was as big as maybe... How big was this salary? 
at the time it was 40, <laughs> it was 40, 46,000. Between 40 and 46,000, that's how much I was paying those guys. But remember, I was coming but from the, the predecessors, no, 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 just not for me. Hey, can I, I was, predecessors born, eh, but who were doing maybe similar level jobs? They didn't exist, they didn't exist at the time, yeah, okay. they didn't exist. This was just new to set up this, structures, yeah, and like set up set structures, up, hey. yeah. So, I, I needed that, hey. um, um. That uh, organizational structure, you get Talogan, you get Talogan. So, because I was coming from from that, you mm. know, I was coming from where the Americans, of course, maybe when you convert that it's US to, to dollar, yeah. it was it was an easier it, it was an easier um, um, a, a decision. Yeah. So that was me. She so said, jack it up, get the best people, and let's move forward and have the the most brilliant mind that are leading the are, are leading our young people and turning them into what is better citizens. Yeah, I guess it scared it worried a lot of people mm. and I think from a level of the at the time the peers it was that you know how are we going to sustain this and my view was that I come from fundraising I can we'll be able to raise the funds how no some month we put a plan because I'm reading here okay. Yeah. Ralit Zati was allegedly suspended. I quote from um, a newspaper we got here. Um, Ralit Zati was allegedly suspended for refusing to act on a directive from another PS Malikonga last month to terminate all contracts of remaining employees. That's the second suspension, Brian. I went through two of them. Eh? You're talking, I'm talking, telling you about the first. The first one. So <laughs> this is the PS. Malikonga, Malikonga, yeah. So are, are, harna madiao, when our, I can raise this money. Then, Why didn't he believe you? I don't know. I, don't, I think, I think, I came from a very different culture. You think I, government doesn't want? Because they got ambition. You know, they don't want someone who's gonna. You can't walk in there and want to do things that they are not used to. I think at the time, remember, this is the time when we had a lot of money yeah. as, as as a country. Yeah. Um, we were receiving grant funding, um, but the 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 attitude was was that we uh, we were not really geared to raise that funding, but I was coming from a PSI, where if you didn't raise the money, you didn't have a job. Yeah. So I thought, you know, put the BNYC in the same uh, bracket, yeah. raise money, bring the best people, run the best uh, youth program. So for me, so you're talking about, I think you're talking about the second suspension. Yeah, probably you're one or, um, yeah. Well, there was a dissolved BNYC at this point. No, that, that's the second time around. Hey. The first time around, I did that. I went on a one-year suspension. I went on Damn. a... I, I went on a... And that time, you know me being entrepreneurial, I think then the entrepreneurial spirit just sparked. Mm. I set up a shop, my first shop at Rail Park. Samsung? No, before oh, okay. I set up the Samsung, I had a, another shop uh, called Rail Park. I was running it with gadgets and whatever. During that one year, remember I have access to a car, salary, phone, whatever you want to do. <laughs> you, oh my! <laughs> no, I'm 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 rolling. I yeah. mean, I, <laughs> I I I set up that uh, that organization um, uh, and uh, went through a disciplinary hearing. I, and I think I'm trying to put together. I have a 500-page manuscript of that that uh, disciplinary hearing. How many? It's 500 pages long, the, the manuscript for the disciplinary hearing. Um, went through that, and eventually I was asked to come back after one year. By that time, I had set, my, I set up my small business. I set it up. Samsung approached me, and I set up one of the biggest Samsung stores in the country. So by the time I went back to work, you can imagine. You, should, you don't even want to be there. I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm not too young as a brother, but yeah. I'm, I'm running this Samsung show that, store that brings enough capital to my to and i'm running the bnyc at the same time mm. at some points because bnyc remember bnyc had very little money yeah you know i know one of the things that uh, was talked about a lot was the corruption at bnyc i can tell you i, I used to sell my guys uh Busibanda and the rest of them there was not much money what mm. we used to do what we had called bnyc was the ability to learn to learn how the structure is run mm. to learn everything that home that the government is doing and be able to be part of the structure mm. but it also allowed you an opportunity if you wanted to be in politics mm. it was the first entry to be in politics so the first suspension i came back when i came back after trouble i had like i said i had a running shop i was set yeah the first thing i walked in is like i walked in and said look now that i know what i'm doing i set up a project called project 50k 
Yeah. You know what was the objective of the project? Yeah. I said, identify 50 young people who are showing potential. Let's facilitate them through our structures and turn them into millionaires. That was the Project 50K. That was mm -hmm. my second time coming. Yeah. And it was highly publicized. It was highly publicized. Yeah. And for some strange reason, also that didn't buy me favor. Mm. Look, do you know who those 50 young people that we identified? It was the likes of Buholo Kanuendo. It was the likes of uh, V. It was the likes of... Um, because we, we, when we said we wanted to identify these young people, we said, let's look for young people who are showing promise already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, the likes of, uh, um, you know, uh, Rampa, yeah. you know, who, own, who owns AgriSales, the likes of Muhammad Raibepe, the likes, we were looking at, into this thing, we we're looking at young people. I don't yeah. know how I missed you, Sky, at that time. No, I was trendy. busy <laughs> traveling the continent. No doubt, right? What? Yes. So you, there yeah. were some results from the Project 50K, ultimately. I don't think that we, we set it up. We set the structure of it. You know, there was a young man. I met a young man called Din, Horata Jintwe, who initially, you know, at the time it was a tenure of, uh, my chairman was Metla. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, who set, we set up the structure. So the, the purpose of the structure was saying, if we set up 50 young people, and we, we just say, didn't say any young person. Yeah. We said young people who show who promise. Already who show who show her, they, they have potential. We then said, if you did that, then they could create 50,000 jobs for you. So we, our target was that by 2011, we, by, I came back, what, yeah, I came back from suspension, I think 2012, mm. and we had given ourselves until 2016, mm. when the country turned 50, yeah. and then we'll have these 50 young millionaires, and then they'll turn 50,000 jobs. That was ambition. But for some strange reason, it didn't sit well with, with a lot of the, the structure. The project never took, took, uh, it took off. Um, it didn't sound okay. From uh, let me be devil's advocate. It didn't sound feasible. But, but like you're saying, the BNYC was in there. They knew the structures of government. Yeah. So you knew how you were going to help them position themselves because they already showed potential. So they saw born by 2016. It the millionaire because I think that's what a lot of people who didn't know already, what the BNYC, BNYC was about. We're, we're doubting as well, Hori, you know. And maybe that's what your detractors were probably saying I, to, 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 to push you back. You know, I can't talk for my detractor, but I think what, what I, I got a lot of pushback. But during that time, when I was at the BNYC, the second time around, we had a farm called Sichaba. We, we got the farm going. We, had, we were entrepreneurial. And I think for me, seeing what my predecessors were doing, were going into politics. For me, that's when I decided that I think I can make a difference outside politics. Mm. I can make a difference in business. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's the direction that I, that I think eventually took. So one year into, so I went one year into BNYC, got suspended for one year, came back, it was a five-year contract, came back, worked for this, this year, this year, and then... Uh, the government decided to say, nah, nah, let's dissolve this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was decided, uh, I think just was Remali Gongwa at the time, and, mm -hmm. and, and I think Ro Loping at the time, and then it was decided to dissolve the BNYC. And that's how um, suddenly I had, um, I had my gratuity, because I was paid one year in advance mm -hmm. to leave. I was told, yeah, take a gratuity, ta. Uh, <laughs> I really have a problem with that thing. Why? Why was the BNYC phased out? I, you know, I think if I take it back, I think the lack of understanding, a lack of understanding what BNYC stood for, I think BNYC was a leadership forum. It created a place where young people could be groomed into leaders. And I think one of the things that we, we, we take for granted is this grooming of leaders. Mm. Then we, what we are going to we end up with is accidental leadership, where you just come out of nowhere and you become a leader. For me, the BNYC, that's what the BNYC provided. The yeah. BNYC provided a forum where young person made a mistake. If they wanted to be, they wanted to eat the money, they were eating money, but it was small money. Especially if they want to get into public service. They want I to think get, that was probably like a, a that proper, is what, training the, the proper training ground for, for, for young people. Yeah, it was also a school for, for all political parties. Mm. And, and, and I think like the people say to me it was skewed to, uh, 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 towards the BDP. Which is natural, you know. In the past, there was not many PSs that were going that were going into opposition. Only now we're seeing. So BNYC was also a training ground for a lot of young political leaders who yeah. who, who came out of SRCs, who came out, who came into the BNYC, who were leaders within the, the their communities. I don't know. I mean, a lot of them also went out to beat 
uh, sitting members of parliament. Yeah. So maybe, you know, maybe that is the that's where the conflict was. Like I said, I. <laughs> okay, because yo, I, I have my own issues, so I'm not gonna put words in your mouth. I don't want to ask any leading questions. <laughs> so you ultimately do leave it, yeah. Um, because of your skills as far as like social marketing yeah. and stuff, you know, you were one of the few people who actually used your store to start endorsing musicians. Yes, yes. And because, it, like, even during your, your years, Kobo PSI, when you guys were using, like, well-known people yes. to, to, for brand positioning, but Steve Stout, the Kobo State, you want to celebrate too, because they pushed, like, advertisers <laughs> and commercial entities to start looking at culture. When, when was that for you? And, like, can you give us some of like, the examples of some of the, the links you try to make between, you know, youth culture and actually commodities and even learn through social uh, change because I think that's that's the core of what you've been doing mostly. Yeah, I, I think, so when I was running, the second time I was running the BNYC, really I was, I was in a good space. <laughs> I mean, I was running my stores. Yeah. I remember I expanded my stores to about four stores um, um, at one time. By the time I was leaving the BNYC, I was negotiating. Four. Yeah, I was negotiating. <laughs> I, Why, I just, you know what the thing with you is? It's that you never even gave me a phone, though. Like. <laughs> you never asked. <laughs> you never no. asked. Let's tell, Anyhow, let's tell who I gave the phone. Let's hey, hear who, who, I gave you, the, phones? who I gave you gave a who bunch I, of niggas phones. <laughs> and here I am interviewing you, brother. They've forgotten about Big Homie, but anyhow. Yeah, who are Sky, was, Sky was too big for us oh, at, the, at that time. Um, so we expanded the stores, you know. Yeah. And um, by 2015, when I was leaving the BNYC, we had a bigger range of stores. I was at the same time negotiating with Bupeu, yeah. Babariki Investment. Uh, Babariki bought my bought 51 percent of my. Do people do know that that is one of the biggest like deals ever, yeah. where you're dealing with teachers because so these are like specials that they then give to each other and say. I have this other homie who always had the leader's phones. Yeah. I'm sure they got them from your stores. Yes, I, I had a lot of, uh, <laughs> I had a lot of uh, interesting clients because I was running. But I think for me, the PSI days sort of like erased that. Yeah. Erased that. I remember uh, one of the guys we signed you know, in, our, in, in the sleeve, yeah? one of the guys to be f fully sponsored by Samsung, you know, Samsung Rail Park, was BK Proctor. Yeah. Of course, it was Shima. Uh, Shima. He's, so. Shima. <laughs> <laughs> He's Shima from Ghetto. Yeah, yeah, from I told Ghetto. you about these Ghetto yeah. <laughs> so, so. But I love that combo. Like, yeah. where, 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 like. Where, where, where the, mm. And then the other guy who came, you know, we, we sponsored the, re the release of his album was, uh, was uh, V. Uh, we we yeah. sponsored V's uh, album release. We also, one of the first artists to have a, 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 an app was the Reiti and the Natives. Mm. We sponsored, we, we helped him put up his ad. I don't think it went far. I mean, it's because of our internet prices. I mean, that's always what the argument is. Yes. The the internet is C C and the, Reiti and the Natives. Yeah. But, but we were working with everybody. We were, when we were, we were working with a lot of the, the, the musicians and the artists and, and whatever. So f from then on, you know, once I ran my store and we sold them. I left the BNYC. I sold them to Bape, to, to Bupeu. We expanded to 13 stores in a very short time, and it overwhelmed the system. You know, we needed more money from uh, who was our partner. Our partners were not coming up with money. Uh, and Andrew Mozamai left Bupeu. <laughs> the whole thing went south. I mean, here I am. I sold the business. You know, I'm hope, you know, I'm counting ching ching. I remember, um, I remember uh, uh, the late Nabil, you know, may his soul rest in peace, uh, and peace be upon him. Mm. Uh, my brother, uh, Nabil Keda, he, he came to me one day after we expanded to 13 stores and said, Ben, do you want to buy Cell City? Um, I had that opportunity, but I, I don't think my partners at that time, I don't think it was the right moment, but mm. it, it happened and, and um, we didn't buy Cell City. We didn't, the, my partners didn't uh, put up uh, more store, um, um, more more stock into the the stores, and eventually, I sold out because I mm. couldn't I couldn't compete. You know, uh, all other stores around me grew and started to own uh, their, their their businesses, yeah. and I I then eventually sold out um, um, my business, mm. uh, the remainder of it to to, to Babereki, yeah. and I think they even eventually it, it was liquidated. So that After. shop in Nikolote Babereki was actually that's that was that was that our shop. Yeah, that was our shop. I think that eventually they liquidated because 
um, you know, the partner that came on board was not really... Because there was no marketing. I think if people marketed Baberiki as that, yeah. I think there would be much more even sentimental value. Yes. Because we all have a Meriki or civil service. That, that could be able thing. To... So maybe even an, an ad. Just an ad. Look at Konaki. Come on. <laughs> an ad. Advertising never hurt anyone. I want to move as fast along. Yes, as fast um, along. How then do you end up li, 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 <laughs> with, lim, the li, the, with the pretty girls? With the pretty girls. This, this is how it started. I think in my life, I had been thinking about, I had an interest in land, you know, low cost housing. Uh, and this is how accidental Miss Botswana was to me. <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to partner with, because remember, I'd been working for NGOs all my life. Yeah. So I had wanted to to partner with um, NGOs to sort of take their unproductive land because NGOs, have a, NGOs and churches have a lot of land and yeah. they are not using it. Yeah. So I had approached a number of NGOs to say, can we, can we take our land? Because donors disappear. Yeah. I said, can we take a land, monetize on it? So I approached the, B, the BCW, yeah. Botswana Council of Women, who are like the license holders for, for or at least the rights holders for, 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 yeah. for lack of a better word, for Ms. Botswana. Yeah. Um, and said, then can we partner with our land? But every time we meet, um, I remember one of the things that would happen is that there would be a writ, there would be a summons, because somebody would have had not paid Ms. Botswana, and then uh, people would get sued. Mm -hmm. So I did ask them to say, I got intrigued and said, could you give me this animal because of Ms. Botswana? Because I had dealt with Ms. Botswana for remember. Yeah. We had funded at the BNYC, I had dealt with the likes of Emma and the likes of whatever, and I thought, I knew, I know what this thing is. Yeah. So I asked them to say, could I take over this Miss Botswana, correct it, and then we could talk about land. Little did I know that I'm tying myself to something that is much bigger than I could ever imagine, yeah. that could be bigger, bigger than myself and much more complex. Yeah. I've, you know, I've, in my experience as an employee, as a businessman, I've never seen any project that has so many moving parts and, and that you need to... So I, I then went to... When, once they gave me, once I realized how complex it was, I then somehow asked them to say, guys, uh, give me five years to correct this thing. Yeah. That's how my journey of Miss Botswana started. This is 2015. This is uh, eventually, I got I left 2015, 2016 hours, 2015, 16, and early of seven, 2017 hours all over with land, yeah. uh, you know, buying technology to build fast. So yeah. eventually got to the, BN, to, to the Botswana Council of Women in train, and they gave me the thing in 2018 with a five-year turnaround plan. Okay. I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought this was easy. You walk into everybody. It's Miss Botswana. They will find you. Oh, my goodness. We start. We realize, we realize it's a complex animal. I was with a, a lady, I recruited a lady called Basadi Masimulo to come, you know, come and help. Bash. Bash, head, head, yeah. this, head this project. I think she's my, one of my biggest cheerleaders and I appreciate her for that. Definitely. So I said, come and head this thing, you know, Great. because I, I had approached the current, I had approached the current Ms. Bozana then, Nicole Haile She's mm -hmm. a member of my team now. To say, can you, you know, I, me, I don't know much about this Ms. <laughs> Bozana thing. Can you manage the patient side? I will try and look at the business side of it, and then we can together. Because NASA Juel at the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. her price money was not paid. And I said, no, then we can raise money and pay you. Yeah. Nicole left the meeting. <laughs> with a yes. Came okay. back <laughs> and said no. Oof. Suddenly I was stuck with this thing. And, 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 you know, kudos to her. She said, you know, had she said yes at the time, maybe it yeah. might not have worked now like it's working now. She left, and um, now suddenly I'm stuck with this animal called Miss Botswana, I have, then Basadi came to address something that I was called. I said, Basadi, can yeah. we run this thing? Basadi agreed. Um, we then said, let's put together a five-year strategy. Okay, then the, my dangerous ambition me. And this is for me something that I think I want to leave, you know, young, every, young piece, every young person, every person that's out there. If your dreams don't scare, don't scare you, then you're not dreaming. Yeah. That's me. I'm, I'm, I do scary dreams. I mean, yeah. you can say from the BNYC, uh, that's what that was my ambition. I said to them, we were have our our salvation was five million. Mm -hmm. I said to them, give me two years, I'll move it to twenty million. So we set up a five year strategy, and Bash was instrumental in, and a couple of other people to say our five year strategy is that we start messy, we take it out of town, we make a big impact, we host Miss World, we win Miss World, and we host Miss World. 
That was our five-year strategy. Year one, start Messi. We had said start Messi. Let me tell you, it was Messi. Piquet. No, Piquet was the first, second year where we said we are going to take it out of town <laughs> for the first time. We started, you know, before we could announce the top 12, a lot of the girls pulled out because we had taken... That's how we ended up with three competitors. Uh, I was the one in, Cha- in Mizuzana when we had three competitors. Yeah. It was... We were getting best left, right, and center. And I have to thank Basadi. She, she can put up a fight. But her, nick, her nickname is Bash, though. So. <laughs> I, you know I guess. I mean? I mean, it's the only punch you're going to get. <laughs> I, I, she, she can take it. She, can t- yeah. she would... Shout out Bash. Basana will throw 20,000 comments at her. Basadi will throw 2,000 comments back. Uh, I mean, she will stay up all night answering. And I think it... But one, slowly we realize, well, this thing, and not for me, and this is where we... I'll fast forward and take it back yeah. to say, we then said, you know, this beauty thing, it's Botswana. Why is it that we've had this beauty thing as Botswana and we are not treating it like a key ingredient? Yeah. And this is what, this is what, this is our argument was our argument back then to say, Botswana, we are the biggest diamond producer by volume and value. Jane mine is the most expensive mine in the world. It means an 80%, 70 to 80% of our revenue comes from diamonds. These diamonds, how about what do these diamonds do? Only when these diamonds are going into jewelry, do we start, can we know the value of the diamond or do we start to make real value out of them? Yeah. So we then changed the narrative and said, no, Botswana is a beauty industry country. Mm. So that's how we started approaching and said, and we started thinking crazy things. Said, Look, that's how we even thought, you know what, we can host Miss World. Yeah. I tell me about what we were thinking, but who we thought <laughs> we could host Miss World back then. Yeah. We went the first year of three people. It was the most embarrassing, expensive year that I've ever experienced yeah. because nobody supported Miss Botswana. You know, when Mutepi Elias went to, to, to Sanya, there was no support. Mm. But I think you don't blame anybody. Um, you don't blame anybody because I think it was, it was the period. So second year, we went to Pico, Spedu came on board. As we just think we are getting out of our heads. Out Where did Spedu get money? We thought. No, no, no. This was back then in yeah. 2019. Because you know, we, you know, when I saw like Spedu, I thought Spedu didn't have any dough. No, no. Spedu had dough. Spedu hey. had dough. Uh, they, put, they put a bit of money. They put, I think, about a bit of money into the, the production in, in Pigwe. Did you ever think about previous uh, organizers of Miss Botswana? Did you not consider the backlash that would also come with it? Also seeing that you were also moving from another tumultuous situation back back then yeah. with Bobby NYC, remembering like, you know, your name being associated with it. Didn't you, you know, weren't you scared? I think I'm always scared. <laughs> but that doesn't stop. You know, how we saw about Shake Bon me, the the previous holders of the of, of the Bissau, license. Hey, Bobby Bissau, Bissau, the, the fish. Bullfish. I think yeah. they became my bouncing point to say, you know one thing when Bisco said to me is that Ben you have to be paid a lot of money to do that thing. Yeah. That's what he said. He says, the risk and the, the reputation and everything, you have to be paid a lot of money. I think, and I, I still want to get paid a lot of money. To, <laughs> you still <laughs> for your money. <laughs> to, to do that. But I went to check it. But we said, you know, year three, we are going to do whatever. COVID hit. We go back and it becomes a huge loss-making pro- uh, project again. But we come out of COVID we identify Palace. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. This, girl's go, this girl goes out and she blows the world out. But you know, you know I had said with such a five year, I keep saying, you know, sometimes you envision things, you put them into the reality. They come into reality. It's, you know, if you don't put them into, so the five year was that we came, the third year Palace blew it because that was our plan. And then our plan was that year four we're winning it. And who, who was that? It was Lesejo. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, yeah how then did you fix the relationship with uh, potential sponsors because it was in shambles. Libo and Nibori Nicola when I walk out of meeting, yeah. It's because no one really believed that it was ever going to amount to anything else. Even when Palisa did win, there yeah. was not a lot of people that were supportive of it. So what kept you going? I think it changed from being just a beauty pageantry for me, like I said, to saying Botswana needs to participate 
it became a civic duty for me as a Mozana to say we need to participate in the in the beauty industry. And when you talk about the beauty industry, you talk about film, you talk about uh, you talk about perfume, makeup, everything. Because I started to believe her. What we need to, need to do is to move it away from just being a, a beauty pageantry. So that's why you see this year we did 37 episodes of television. And we sold those to, to, to be TV. Mm. That's what this is supposed to be. I mean, uh, the amount of love that exists for pageantry, that's what we wanted to turn it into. So, so for me, I don't think we ever recovered. Uh, we recovered from uh, sponsors. Yeah. Because to this day, we are still struggling to get the big only now we're seeing the likes of Lucara who've come on board big time and yeah. sends us with a you know we, we get to Miss World and we disrupt everything because I don't want to 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 I don't I don't want to 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 I don't Hey, big up, listen, what, 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 what? All of these um, congratulations are coming in when she's now advancing. Yeah. Ibila, I want you to, p don't put them on blast, but have any of these companies, have you never gone to them before and Ebebazwa behind afterwards, Motasna was not successful? They have. And, and, it's, not a, and, it's, not a and it's not a blast. Yeah. You see, and I differ with that position, Sky, the e position e that you hold. Because for me, I only come to Sky because Sky is Sky. E Otherwise, why? Someone put the guy with a Sky on, the, on his face. <laughs> on his face. Why? <laughs> I think e we come to local color because the local corner because they produce good content. We not for me, that has never been an excuse. I don't hold anything. I think it's when somebody does false advertising. Yeah. where I hold a grudge against them. But anybody who comes to us because they see that we're doing good and they want to associate to be associated, I praise them. It means I'm doing something good. Yeah. So for me, that putting in blast for me is a different approach altogether. So we, we took five years to build this brand because we wanted this brand to be reputable and I think we are getting there. Mm. People are coming to us and I'm not going to put anybody in blast. If you think you want to work with us, let's not, you know, who, who are putting blast is those that take, Shortcuts, hey. shortcuts, uh, the phase and congratulations. Yeah, knowing, about, about, about. Know, knowing the trademark, yeah. knowing that you know what we need, need to do is that we need to move our brands into trademark and whatever, so where people cannot use the, the brands. Because look, our kids, you, you know, our futures, everything is based on you know image and content creation. That's the new gold. I mean, I think it's not something that you do because there's nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I say that be, uh, the beauty industry because once I started to think about this as a beauty industry, I started to see 700 billion. That's how much the beauty industry generates globally. Yes. 90 billion, that's what, how much diamonds generate globally. So if we are the biggest player in diamonds and we're only playing in the, in the 90 billion, we are better off playing in the 600 billion. That is, that's what, how Paris make their money. For me, you know, I'm saying these numbers and they're scary even to myself. Yeah, no, no, I've no, never, no. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm saying <laughs> this because I want us to, you know, as an end, you know, you, the year five, when we started to talk about year five, how we are going to host Ms. World and how we, the ambition here was that we started to see those numbers mm. popping up to say, say we hosted Ms. World. It means... Miss World, most 90% of the time, they're not going to bring their own equipment. Whatever. It means local corner is going to be the one producing some of this. BTV, we're going to see so much value coming to our way. So for me, that, that has been the driving force towards me saying, I'm going to change this thing. I'm going to change how people see beauty. Because look, Botswana, we are a beauty industry country. Anything about us you want to sell is beauty. Mm. I don't know if you guys see that. I, I, I think, I hope any of you, even the guys who are running this podcast, see that. Yeah. Look, Botswana... Our women beauty, mm. our wildlife beauty, yeah. our makadikadi beauty. People come to, to our country because they are looking for beauty. Yeah. So in essence, we are a beauty industry. We are a beauty country. Yeah. We sell purely beauty. And to top it off, the one that has sustained us for the longest time being diamonds is in the beauty space. So yeah. I'm, we are all about beauty as a country. I think that's why I'm driven about it. That's why I've put it. And then once our first initial five years started, we, st we have started now a new agreement where we are going to end in 2026, where we are, we'll be turning 60 as a country. Mm. That's the time when we want to host the world. It's, it's our diamond you jubilee. You signed another deal? Yeah. 
<laughs> King Ben. That was like such a light flex. Yeah. But I'm so happy because I'm thinking that was going to be one of my, my, my next questions because I can see on all you have plans for, for the future. But I, before we go further, what impact did Palisa have um, for the reputation of the pageant holistically? I mean, in, in places that we wouldn't even imagine. Oh my God, massive. Yeah. I came back from Puerto Rico. And I need to, you know, I need to flex with that letter. <laughs> I came back from Puerto Rico with a letter from the Miss World organization offering Botswana the 73rd Miss World. Jesus Christ. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what? If, if there's anything that Palasa did for me, besides, you know, the dress issue was the minor issue. I mean, I think you guys, I, I keep saying, <laughs> I want to crush it before you guys raise it. All right, because, yeah. Because, you can actually. You know, if where you guys are in the film industry, the most mistake you can make is a camera. You can't make any. The most if you are in, if you are changing a lot of dresses, the most mistake you will make is with a dress. So yeah. it's expected, and, and I don't think I don't think it was a big issue. I think we 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 were looking for an excuse because we are looking for an excuse just to hold on to to ensure that we protect our girls. Yeah. For me, that, that that's what it is. I think the biggest price Alessa got us was that people were amazed at Hori. People were. I think they're still now, given Kalesejo, Jorge, are you sure there's only 2 million people in that country? Because you sound like you are 20 million. Mm. The voting, the social media, the social media uh, uh, attacks, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the social media, we are on fire. <laughs> 50. <laughs> 50. <laughs> so for me, as an 11th man, as an 11th man, you know, if it is in football, as an mm. 11th, as a 12th man, yeah. I don't think you can't get it better than Emotswana. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think, you know, that's why I want to celebrate the beauty, I celebrate the beauty of people because I think we're the greatest. Definitely. You know, we are the most, we have the most beautiful women in the world. In my, for me, studying with my wife. Um, even though I manage a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. Watch it. Yeah, no. But, but yeah. That, so she did make that big of an impression. Big impression. That's mm. the one thing Palesa brought us. Palesa brought us. If we came back, we were not, I don't think we were ready. I don't think we were. I don't think the. I don't think anybody was yeah. ready because we needed to raise, uh, to buy the rights for Miss World to host Miss World, it was about ten million dollars. Just to get um, to franchise, get franchise yeah, to host Miss World. Of course, they spent half of that money. But that's what they do it for a month. Then. Yeah, seventy percent of that. How money. long is that pageant? It takes a month. They spend a month here, and they spend all that money in the country. So it's 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 a oh. valuable. It's a they spend. 70% of that money in the country. When you think about it, it's, it's not a lot of money. I mean, I think right now there are some cars you can afford for 10. If you have Who? 10 million, yeah, not you. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Guys like, you, guys like you who should be belonging in Hollywood. Yeah? No, you, owning those you know, cars. Yeah, owning those cars. And you know, for me, a, a punchline for guys like you who, yes, owned, who owned Africa. Yes, sir. Yeah, who, who, and this is the missed op this is the missed opportunity. I don't know how where we miss it as a country. And I I think I'm also part of that. Where guys like Sky who, who will dominate the Skyways and they come back and be Botswana. Yeah. And then they just want us to be basic. Yeah, but we're then, killing then it then on they, the pudi cast, baby. They, they, this they, is they, why we got uh, Ben <laughs> Ralentz in the house. I also want to ask about like what it entails to get ready for such uh, an event like your name is world. Because like it looks like it's a lot of work and to to your credit, you guys are always ready. And it always looks like it's a nightmare just to get ready for, for, for a week. And, you t and we saw, like, uh, Lesoko was there for like a month or something. What does it take to get ready for a Miss World competition? And I want all of it, Ben. Like, uh, all of. You know, uh, mm, okay. you know, I say, uh, one of the lessons for me is that pageantry is one of the most difficult things that you can do. Mm. Because you need to, and I'll talk about the girl. Before you get to what you got to get the girl. Yeah, you got to get the girl. But she needs to be all rounded. She needs to be beautiful. She needs to be smart. She needs to have international. She needs to be sporty. She needs to have community project in, the, in her community. She needs to be a total package. That's why my girls are entering pageantry. Mm -hmm. I would not have said this in the past. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm saying this because it's such a complete. You can be a footballer. You don't need to be intelligent at everything else. Yeah. Uh, the footballers can excuse me. But you can't enter pageantry without a full package mm. because you need to be a good speaker. You need to have international affairs. You need to have everything. So that's the one aspect of pageantry. Secondly, it's an intensive, when it comes to wardrobe, I mean, 
palesa o lesego the minimum is about 65 pieces of gar of garments that you are taking to Miss World because you plan for every day every night the change it's an expensive undertaking just walking to eat breakfast to eat breakfast if you are competing so and you're competing with all these girls with all these multi skills so pageantry is one of the hardest things that you can do it's tough and running it remember you are dependent on the, you dependent on treating this individual well yeah, yeah. for them to speak well to, for them to be able to represent you. it's the hardest thing to do yeah. one of the things that I, um, my team always accuse me and I say look we spend eight months to search for this one person we have to try to treat them well of yeah. course it's never easy I can tell you every Muslim will tell you that they've gone through trauma mm -hmm. I've tried very hard to minimize it yeah, yeah, yeah. because you are the individual you know you as Ms. Muslim even when you are angry you have to go out and smile yeah. you have yeah. to wake up and you have to do that Every, every single day, day, every single time. But this is so everything needs to be ready because I was wondering about the clothing because this means doesn't sort of every single day. So do they go with their own makeup artist? Do they go? No. How do you look good when you get out of your room? When you at Miss World, mm. when you you know this is the funny thing. Maybe I may, I forgot to mention it. You need to know how to sew your own clothes. You need to know how to make your own makeup. You need to know how to do your hair. Because otherwise, there will be one of you and 30 girls around that person who's taking care of you. Look, you, you can send somebody with, to go and attend with Miss Well, but they go into camp. You don't get to see them. So you'll be just traveling. So you only are available maybe the final week. That's when people can see you and whatever. So you need to be very, very strong when you are a Miss World contender. Hey, mm. so you guys pick them well then. Well, I, I have a, another different view. Hey, what do you think it is? What, my what do you think? My thinking is that this country has one of the strongest women in the world. Definitely. Yay! Very strong. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Aye. And. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that too. Yeah. <laughs> to an extent that we can't handle them. You think that's why the GBV. The GBV um, and all these things is a result of us. You know, I think. The boy child, like I said, is always left behind yeah. to fend for themselves. They're not taught, you know, you're, you're told to be, for some reason, you are taught to be weak, to be a very good husband or, or boyfriend. So because that is reflected as a weakness and you don't have, because we are not available elsewhere. Yeah. 70% of them are raised by women, by boys are raised by women, mm -hmm. these very strong women. Um, so we are not ready. So for me, that's the other thing that, that you know, forms part of the, the Motswana women, yeah. Definitely. I want to get into an Lesero Chombo. Um, when it started and you saw then the backlash that came from her when, because there was not a lot of people who were happy about her when she first came out. Um, there were a couple of talks on social media, you know. Um, how were you able to then protect someone like that and, you know, zone into the choice that you have made? Mm and go all out to make sure that, you know, nothing phases you. I know you're a strong world person, mm. but how easy is it to then, I guess, saw into this girl, mm. you know, because I'm scared for her because yeah. she looks like she's a baby, mm. you know. So mm. how do you saw into this young person and how do you also, as a unit, stay ready and look forward to, okay, we'll have this person ready in the next nine months? I think, I think for, first of all, let me, don't let the looks... <laughs> Don't let that fool you. She's a very strong young woman. Okay. They are very strong. No offense. They are naturally very, very strong. Um, they, 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 to be a patient girl, you have to be strong. I think, but Lesero was another, another level altogether. She mm. had been practicing this for five years. She has been ready. She, has, she was intentional about it. So you're not going to phase her. So for me, much of the protection was that, well, she was coming under a cloud. I remember she used to say, the, 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 is she fitting the shoes? She used to say, no, she, she's a size seven, she's a size nine. I want you to hold that thought. I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 Is it? Yeah? I come as I will with my friends. I I to go to the I to go to the I to go to the 
not not too controversial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? No, 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 not a problem. Yeah, not a problem. Can I? Yes, this is very important. And we are back. I'm good. Are we good? All right. All right. And uh, yeah, still hanging out with the. Uh, but I don't need to do all of that. Yeah. We had a bathroom break. I had to go, you know. No, but you can because you're going to do something. Oh. A brother has to go to the lavatory. Mm. All right, so I want to talk about prizes. How did you change that? Um, did Lesero get her prizes? Did Palesa get her prizes? Um, before we move on to the night that was uh, a couple of days ago, um, how did you change that situation? I think one of the things that for me, and um, you know, there's a, I, I don't know whether to go into it as an, the abundance so, a community society and the scarcity mentality. Okay. Um, whether to call it that, but maybe that's the wrong way. But for me, the moment I came into Botswana, I made the prices private. Yeah. Oh, yes. I made the prices private because the prices were distorting what we wanted to achieve. Yeah. One of the biggest prizes is that, and I tell every girl, and I'll say this now, one of the biggest prizes you can get, even ever, even in times when Ms. Botswana was in his rogue. Uh, Ms. Botswana does becomes as a good prize mm. just by winning it because it changes your life trajectory. So for me, uh, the money part of whatever happens, it's a smaller bit of what this prize is about. Yeah. The price for me for the last three, four years has been winning Ms. Botswana. But second to that, yeah. <laughs> Ms. Botswana then will take care of your housing needs for the year give an allowance, all your transport, um, all your wardrobe. To, so if you count all those things, you, they probably earn more than half of the people that I know who work. Mm. Okay. That's, a, that's a price that we don't talk about when, when in the last few years that I've been running. This was a conscious but decision. I, I, it was a conscious decision to say, yeah. let's, let's, let's take it back and let's make uh, winning Ms. Botswana the price. Mm. And then we will take care of you. I got the basic, whatever it is, all those things. That's, that's how I attend it. But we also, but we are changing back this year and we're also introducing again the price because we're starting to see ourselves, uh, mm. see ourselves come into partnerships with a, a lot of uh, partners. So all of but them- But that's in addition to what you've already been doing. Yeah, what, what which is profile yeah. and then what I think, but just winning. Yeah, but just winning. Yeah. So, uh, Palasa had her prize. She got her prize. Lesego has a prize. She's going. She's getting her prize. Her, her her term is ended now, and she will get her prize. So we we have never really not given a prize. Look, the lim the limitations we have is that maybe some of the Ms. Botswana is that they would have wanted us to do more, mm -hmm. um, like maybe give her more, a more expensive wardrobe, give her, you know, put more money into what they're doing. But half of the time, like you said, half of the time we are, we, we are proof of concept. Yeah. yeah, we don't get any money, but we are running a very expensive project. I think yeah. minimum, Ms. Bozana, the cost to company is close to minimum 700. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to talk more about Lise Chombo because now she is currently Miss World Africa. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Yeah. One more. Yeah. <laughs> so, what call do you get as Miss Botswana office when she is Miss World Africa? And what does this mean? I mean, have you, I'm sure you've had conversation with her. What does this mean for her going forward? What it means is that Lesoho now has moved from being a local girl to an international girl. Mm. Um, and, and something that I think I talked about uh, for. For, for people like you because I wanted to for me maybe in a strange way I hadn't planned it yeah. but in a strange way I'm seeing that the women that are coming out of the institution that I'm running now are going to be coming to be great women it's yeah. now becoming fashionable we are producing great women it's Definitely. not it's yeah. no longer a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a yeah. Like if you do it the first time, people go, hey, 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 you can't do it the second time because yes. it's not new. So anymore. we've done it the first time. Lesero has further elevated that she's mm. one Miss Africa. I think for me now, what needs to do is that we are going to take her to the world. She's going to start to be shown to the world. And uh, 
we were very intentional. I mean, um, like I said, Lesora is a very intentional uh, young woman. She, she went yes, to Miss World confident. with no other plan <laughs> but to win Miss World. Yeah. And she executed very well on it. I guess maybe in our dreams we had never affected the, Af the Miss Africa. So maybe God just reminded us that, no, you skipped a step. Mm. She, they took us to Miss Africa. Now, Anisha. You shoot, for the, you shoot for the moon and land on the stars. Yes, yes, to. yes. Maybe yeah. Anisha now, she's under pressure to, to, shoot for the, for, to, to shoot for the sky or shoot for whatever in, yeah. in, in that language. So she, she's going to do that. I think the, there are discussions going on. I think for Lesero, Lesero is very passionate about her foundation work. You know, Lesero's Chombo Foundation and including her Genesis work, we, uh, I think she, because she's very intentional and she knows what she wants to do, I think you will see a lot of her doing that work and I think she's going to be successful. You know, mm. I have no doubt. I have no doubt that she's going to move on to the next level. We were also in our own little way, throwing in our little weight, you know. Yeah. You know, she had a very good wardrobe chosen by her. Yeah. Uh, she, and, and, you know, because when you have an intentional person, all you need to do is just, you know, facilitate and let her, let the momentum carry itself. Um, and, and, and I know we then came in, uh, thanks to Lukara Botswana, came in, we, we threw in the, uh, the Agbaka diamond as part of... <laughs> Agbaka, <laughs> yeah. The Agbaka is that neck piece that she was wearing that was, that was made that was made out of Botswana diamonds. And it was the most... Trying to put it in there. But it was, it's game changing. It's what I said at the beginning. Mm. When we set out this thing, we said, look, we, we want to host Miss World. We want to do great things. We want to, we want what Milan is doing, got the beauty in the beauty fashion and content. We want to, we want to take a piece of that. Miss so, Botswana wearing a Botswana diamond, diamond at Miss World. World. We how can Just you that how, alone? How like, can you flex? We have more that diamonds. That is the biggest flex ever. We have more diamonds and sense. You know, I know guys from Europe who are saying, No, you know, they've never had where an African country comes in and it's it's working like like that. The guy actually, he was from the Czech Republic. I met him before the Czech Republic won. Hey. We met him and he ended up coming. He was in Botswana, part of the choreography team. Did a bit of choreography. Most of it was done by my team, but mm. he did some TA. He and he was also sat in the judging panel for the current Miss uh, choosing Anisha. Mm. So we met because he was fascinated. Who is this country in Africa where they are supposed to go Sotera? They are able to bring the most expensive piece to Miss World. I want to talk about you know this most expensive country you know, you know, Sotera, you know, what? what have we done to our chances of ever hosting Miss World? Because uh, of our social media commentary um, after uh, Lesero Chombo lost um, Miss World. Because, uh, you know, I, I was one of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so people were, people were calling me, can this guy have a bra? No, no, no. I was mad. But I also knew that I was going to be But at the same time, I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't fix our hair. <laughs> Why you tell? So I think I think we, were, we messed up. I was scared. I was worried the first time around. I think for me the worry was. Remember, but when this all halabalu was going on, Lesero was sitting with these guys in Mauritius. She was. She's now part of Miss World organization. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think. I think. Yeah, but they missed her on one picture. Yeah. yeah. There was one picture where they were standing by the side of the. I think they were standing by the side of the river where the boat is. Yes, yes, no, it, no, 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 no. Lesero was very sick actually when the whole time she then? was. No, 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 no. That's, that's very true. I mean, okay. remember, even when she came back, we postponed all her interviews. Huh? Okay. Yeah, we postponed all. Last week, Lesero, oh, even on national TV, on, on TV, she was coughing. Lesero was very sick. I had to send my friends. I, I don't think, you, you know, we treat our queen like queens. You yes, know? sir. No, we like like they. When you become Miss Botswana, you have you have You've people. Made it, baby. You made it. You have people around you. We we don't joke, man. We yeah. don't joke. Even right now, we 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 picking up everything. We picking up the standard, and yeah. that's the, the the treatment. You know that treatment that Lesero wanted. You know she has people around her. You know yeah. you have the, your daily chaperone. That person who's just there to take care of you. I saw her walk into the building on BTV flowing like this i'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're looking like a whole superhero yeah so we haven't she, messed she our chances is, up uh it's you, you know what i i 
sometimes I, because I don't run Miss World, mm. so I don't know how they decide, you know, but it's a commercial business. This we should remember. These guys are not going to judge according to our standards. They're going to judge how it makes commercial sense to them. So I don't know how it made commercial sense for Rebaska Batsale. So I thought it made commercial sense. Mm. I, as a black guy, I thought, well, this is the time for Africa. But, you know, I, because I don't have the integrities of how they chose, I, I will not go into it and try and explain it. Yeah. All I know is that we've made an impact. We've made an impact as a country. All I know is that uh, yesterday, this is a drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, <laughs> drum roll moment. <laughs> After crowning Anishia, I get a strange call from a UK number, plus four four. Yeah. Remember, I don't have Mum Molly's number. Okay. Mum Molly is the owner of Miss World, Julia Molly. I get a call from her. She says she congratulates us on choosing an excellent representative in Anishia. She's beautiful, she's whatever. I believe this. That means she was watching. I mean, how many of us get that call? I mean, I was like, I was shaking. I mean, this is, this is, yeah, I can feel this, it, yeah. is this is Ms. World. Yeah, and and she then I'm finally like, says, I think you're ready to host our competition. Are you serious, Ben? Hey. <laughs> Let me not. Okay, let's not get too excited. Yeah, I'm not getting too excited. But what I'm saying is that, guys, you, we need to one minute celebrate what happens to us back then. By then, it's a moment she has called herself. I've saved her number now. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I've saved her number. But let me tell you, and, and, and I know as we move towards um, where we want to go, for me, hosting Miss World is one of the biggest opportunities that we can have. I've calculated the numbers. I've calculated the number of people that will visit us. I've calculated what it will mean to the local industry. I think we are ripe. We are time for it. We are our my strategy. Look, you know, as she talked about, as she introduced the mindset change concept, you know, yes, us changing our mindset and us saying this can be done. I think for me, that was, it's the right fit. Um, if we're not hosting Miss World, we're hosting something big in 2026. Mm. And it has to do with diamonds. Yeah. And for me, that call came at the right time. I, I'm thinking, this is the right time. This is the right time to show the world what we're made of. Mm. What we try to do on Saturday. Yeah, you know. I, I, and with that, you know, and the event that happened on, on Saturday, as a unit, as a team that has been working tirelessly to at least get us to a point where we are reputable enough to even get a Julia Moly call, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, how do you guys think you've, you've performed in these years, in these past couple of years? And what should Botswana expect? Because you did an amazing job this past weekend. What should we expect? Uh, and, you know, these cameras are watching. We'll be asking you this in 10 years. <laughs> Because we got the other deal, you know, and we have five more years uh, to, to keep doing Miss Botswana. So, three more, three more. Yeah. Years. Three plus one, three, three plus one. Yes, sir. The 26 we are hosting as well. Yes, sir. I, I think what I can, what Botswana can expect is that Botswana, we, we are going to keep trying. We're going to keep pushing the boundaries. Are we going to make a mistake? We are. It's the most sensitive thing. Ms. Running Ms. Botswana is the most scariest thing that you can do. You're always on your edge. You always never know whether you're going to make a mistake or not. But I also, I think for me, one of the things that, and that's why I was excited when I got here, says one of the things that we have been trying and, and we are going to see, you're going to see a lot of it, is that when we see talent, we want to work with it. Yeah. So that's why you are going to see some of the best Botswana on stage yeah. or working around us, you know, like the lack of, Joe Manuel at, at, at Braveheart, yeah. the lack of Nicole herself, you know, yeah. she runs the pageantry academy. She's producing interesting young people mm. in the pageantry space. We, we asked her to come and work with us. You know, the likes, um, you will see the likes of BK working with us when we are doing fashion expos because we just don't do, we do fashion expos. We, we are, we're into fashion, we're into film, we're, we're shooting 37 episodes. We, every year for BTV, we'll be shooting 37 episodes for the next two years. You would see a lot of a lot of us involving a lot of talented Botswana. Because I'm saying, why not why not go for those that are better, much better than you? Definitely. So that's going to be the attempt. You know, for me, the, our designers. You know, uh, that design for Lesejo. I mean, it was they did an amazing job. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, so so we are going to keep repeating that and 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 taking it to Botswana. Look. I don't know whether I'm 
whether what I'm saying is that I know because we set such dangerous ambitions definitely sometimes yeah. we're going to miss the point sometimes we're going to f- uh, flop on it but we don't do it because we have any ill intents we do it because man one love for BW definitely More, yeah before we talk about our, our 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 queen right now I want to talk about firstly I'll, I'll talk about someone who hails from the Republic of Molepolole because <laughs> uh, we're, we're mad Haley didn't <laughs> take it you know never mind that she's Zanzela Hishfield's daughter but like um, Lisa Baga you know she she was trying herself for the second time again mm. even her there was a really inspirational um, Facebook post that someone put about her um, where they were talking about, you know, sometimes uh, they were talking about not getting a job. Yeah. They were talking about, you know, like seeing this baby girl try her thing and not getting it always reminds them about being resolute, resolute, resolute. Um, and that major, major inspirations to everyone in Botswana, you know, the big up yourselves, young ladies, uh, yeah. for doing your thing. Mm. For those, because you sit behind closed doors with these guys, can you give the fans, Baga Haley, <laughs> Lisa Baga, <laughs> um, some, some idea or what can the girls do better? I don't know. Because guys are just hurt. I think competition is hurting. Mm. If competition is hurting and you will always get hurt. Jose Los Akura, Jose Jose Los Akura it will always hurt. <laughs> um, especially that if you... And even advice to them also yeah, as if young you look people. At, if yeah. you look at the, the from the onset... Um, the predictions. What were the predictions say? The predictions were saying they were going to win because they had no. Won. The predictions were had, had the three of them, always. But you know what is the crazy part is that they won their. I think Haley won. I think Sabaha won top model, and I. Oh no, Sabaha won um, sports, hmm. and I think Haley won top model. And then people were just saying, okay, this means this is an extra. They are going to win it. So, how much of an effect did those um, activities have? On the final, um, they they have an they have an effect. That's why yeah. you are in the final. Yeah, yeah, they have an effect. That's why in the final. But you know the other things that the, the other things that come into play. You know the the, the 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 judges. Look, you can imagine had one of them won as well. Mm. The other group would have been met. So it's it's, it's you know at the end of the day there's going to be there's <laughs> going to be there's going to be a winner and yeah. no hate. You know they are amazing uh, young women. Um, yeah. I mean. Haley, Sabaha, yeah. amazing young women. I wish all of them could win and all of them could be become my queen. Yeah. But unfortunately, one has to win. Mm. And when that happens, others are not going to be happy. Definitely. Um, I, I think the post Yara Sabaha was quite an interesting one. And I think it relates to Nicole, mm. uh, our head of uh, pageantry. Oh, you saw the post she, as well. Yeah, she, mm. she's, she tried seven times before she won Miss Botswana. I think five or seven times, but a big number. Uh, ask me. I'm. I'm still trying. We still. Tr- all of us are still trying. Yeah. <laughs> all of us are still trying, trying and it's not a one-shot thing. And um, are we said? Does it break down a, a number of young people? I think it does. But I think they are much stronger than that. I think if you look at Haley Haley's uh, post right now, mm. she has congratulated uh, uh, Anisha. If you look at Sabaka, she already did it last night. Yeah. So for me, it shows this very strong women that I think um, we will continue to work with them. Um, I wish I wish they could win all of them. You remember, I had to go through uh, 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 Ua. Mm. Ua um, <laughs> um, uh, Fafa situation. Yes, sir. And, and, you know, it's competition. Sometimes the judges will just throw in this curveball. Sometimes the people you trust, and now for me, I believe the people you trust, that, that say, for me to get that call, the affirmation call yesterday to say your girl is beautiful Wait, from, the, from, the, from, the, from, f- from the God of pageantry herself, I was like, That's yeah. nuts. No, yeah, yeah. That's we it. got it right. So I'm, That's big. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, I wanted to get back to policy on returning mm. to the pageant. What is the policy for girls who've been on the pageant it's, it's, about it's op- returning? It's open, man. It's yep. open. It's a, it's a free competition. I think they also sometimes outgrow coming back over and over. You're born about yeah, but they, you they, can make that decision yourself. They, maybe, maybe, age, pageant. maybe age catches up or something yeah. like that. But otherwise, they, they are allowed to come through. Okay. Mm. And then finally, Queen Anisia. Mm. Um, what can you say in the early days? Because you've been around um, these young ladies as well. What is it about her that you think ultimately made her the one, from your point of view, 
ultimately have made her someone that can be the one to, to wear this crown. And what can we expect from her? I'm putting you on the spot. You know, but Look, she's a, she's a former winner. She oh. went internationally and was the, the second runner-up princess in Miss Teen, Miss Teen International. So oh, she, okay. she's not new to the space. Oh, okay. she's, a former, she's a former winner. She, she's, you know... <laughs> yeah, she, she's somebody, she stands out. She's hey. somebody who... Um, she stands out. Not to say, you know, like I said, it always goes down. There's always going to be one winner. Um, we want a competitor, at least. I remember Emma. Emma was like the ultimate competitor. I saw Emma do a poem on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> like a whole poem yeah. on the spot. I yeah. was like one of the judges when we were doing, um, when she was Miss Botswana at the time. And as a rapper, well, know you can yeah. see when someone is freestyling. Yes. But the fact that she did that, yes. I was like, okay. So, like you're saying, all of these young ladies are more than one thing and this they, is what makes them... They are more than one thing. They are, they are amazing in many, many aspects. So, that's, it's... it's it's a very tough one. I think one of the most difficult ones uh, to, in the judges' space. Uh, of course, you pick your, you pick your, you pick yours, and yeah. then you stick with yours. But you forget that they are also uh, throwing in their own. Yeah. So. Wow. I think, I think we're gonna have a part two, because you, you know, you have, you, you have a whole life story. But like one hour thirty minutes is not enough. I'm gonna shut it down here and ask you about one order. Okay, the preparations for. Um, Anisia, what can we do as the general public to, to help um, yourselves uh, as the custodians of your name, Ms. Botswana, and her to get her to a better position? Should we keep arguing on these platforms <laughs> or should we shut up? Yeah. <laughs> I think... Ram, I think Ram, the, Ram says, uh, yeah, I think the good thing is that Botswana, Botswana, we argue, but we have no... You know, we've not so much ill intentions. I yeah. think we we argue, we finish our arguments, and and we move ahead along. I think this is the the comfort that our we were giving to even the Miss World people to say, no, 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 we are just angry for one for this time, but we will move along. Mm -hmm. But I think they've had our complaints, and I think they will take cognizance cognizance of it. Um, I'm hoping that um, the Miss World people. And including the current as well, and some of the team will be coming to Botswana soon uh, to to come and to come and crown and to come and just celebrate the uh, Serochombo uh, and also celebrate the new one and hopefully give us the final news that we are getting this thing going because I'm so ready. I, I think mm. we're ready as a nation. We we are ready to host the world. And as I said, on the 60th. I mean. You know, Halo China 60, that's your diamond jubilee. Definitely. What a better time to host. Definitely. To host the world. So for me, we, Sky will be producing a tune for 60th. <laughs> Local Let's Caller go. will be shoot, shooting a 60th anniversary. Yes, <laughs> so I, I, uh, uh, that guy will be doing what, that guy will be doing whatever he's doing. Eh, no, he's a chef. We're cooking. <laughs> we're doing everything. But like that's really, really awesome. So but like, I'm just happy because I think that's what we were all scared about. Latin through Twitter and we're just thinking, well, okay, as as a country, I've realized King, get what is me out. Mm. and have conferences. Yeah. I've heard the president talk about that a lot yes. where he talks about like mice, yeah. Uh, miss meeting incentive conferences and, and whatever. That, that is that's... one of the most brilliant things that I've seen yeah. our president pursue Yeah, that I don't think people see. People are all coming here to have conferences from it's, all it's... across the world. I st when I started the con this conversation, I said one thing, and I'm going to repeat it. Botswana, we are a beauty industry country. Beauty here, I don't just mean the makeup and whatever. I mean beauty in all aspects. You know, we are so beauty that even our old men, it's a beauty thing. My old man, yeah. <laughs> you know, our beef is beautiful. Yeah. So we sell beauty, and it needs... That's one. That's how the my strategy falls square into our 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 strategy as a country, and that's why really Botswana we are known for this peaceful as a peaceful nation, as a loving nation, as as we are peaceful but loud, mm, very two million strong but yeah. loud, but <laughs> uh, but we want the we want to encourage the world to come here, yeah. and I think that's one thing that we should continue doing because that's where uh, the world coming here is is what is going to be our bread and butter. Awesome stuff. Mr. Ben Relitati, how are you going to break your fast? I'm going to break my fast. Because um, I don't know how you did it, man. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I don't know how you did it next to a guy who's out here. Yeah. Um, you know, not being disciplined. Mm. How do you usually break your fast? No, you're, you're like, I pray. And, yeah. then, and then I have, normally I have a, a day to water. And then yeah. that's how I break it. That's why you look so good. Look at my fat punk bum. But hey, man, I'm, hey, man, yeah, I'm, ah. I'm nice. I, still, I, I, still, I still run marathons. Eh? Yeah. And, um, you know, I look forward because I'm going to do my second comrades. You know, oh. Comrades is 90 kilometers. Huh? <laughs> so. <laughs> and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much to Ben Ralitasi for hanging out with us on today's booty cast. And uh, shout out to Local Corner. Shout out to Leo's Inn. Shout out to our friends at Drinks Direct uh, for um, the patty. And also our people at Crystal Clear Luxury Ice for the fancy ice, man. Hit us up on... Um, our comments. We'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. We'll let you know where to get these fancy eyes. But like, I see. Why don't I rent some present? Yeah, okay, I want. You can throw it in some water. I got a tema, man. I got a tema. Beauty industry. Yeah. And that's how we end it, guys. See you next week on the podcast. It's been real. Peace. Thank you. Different identities. <laughs>